So, so one of the things that is very little known is this um, business loss limitation rule, which everybody, everybody who makes any significant amount of income should be paying attention to. And here's how the rule works. It used to be that if you had losses from businesses, including rental real estate, you could offset a hundred percent of your other income. Not so anymore. Uh, the 2017 act, this was the Trump tax bill, put this into place, um, but it was postponed all through the pandemic. And it has, isn't until 2022 that it comes into play. And what this new bill does is actually pushes it, actually um, lengthens the term of it. It goes until 2000, 2028 now. Now, here's what it means. If you have over $500,000 of wage income, income from interest, income from dividends, income from your uh, retirement plans, if you have over $500,000 of that, you you can only offset up to $500,000 of that type of income total um, with your losses from real estate, uh, solar, um, other 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 tax benefits that you would have. Otherwise you can only offset $500,000 of losses. So if you're a doctor, for example, making $800,000 a year, and let's say your, uh, your, your spouse is decides to do real estate full time. So they're a real estate professional and you have $2 million of losses during the year, you're still going to pay tax on $300,000 because you only get to offset $500,000 of that wage income. You know, that there's been an assault on employees. Remember until 1944, employees didn't pay tax at all in the United States. Hmm. There, there was no income tax on employees um, before 1944. It wasn't until after that. And even after that, for many years, the standard deduction and, um, and the dependent deductions, they were enough to offset the average person's income. It's only really been in the last 30, 40 years where the, where it's all shifted away from focusing on basically taxing the rich to taxing the middle class. And that's, that's where all the taxes are now. They're all on the middle class. So the solar tax benefits are amazing. And it's not just solar, by the way, it, it, it applies to hydrogen. There's actually nuclear tax benefits in here for, for, and is that for the business or for the investor or both? It, for solar, it is for the business or the homeowner. However, this businesses are better as always businesses okay. get better tax benefits than, indiv- than uh, homeowners do. So here's the first thing. First thing is you put solar on your house or on your uh, business, your real estate, your, your, you, you put on your home, your personal real estate, or you put it on your investment real estate. You're going to get a credit now of 30% of the cost of that solar, which means you put a hundred thousand dollars. Like I'm putting on my building right now in Tempe, I'm putting a hundred thousand dollars of solar on. I will get a tax credit immediately of $30,000. Um, for a homeowner, that's where it ends for a business owner. It gets better because not only do you get the $30,000 credit, but you get to deduct 85% or in a hundred thousand dollars, you get an $85,000 deduction. So that means that if you're in a um, 40% tax bracket, that's basically $34,000 on top of the 30,000. So, wow. so wow. think about it. You put yeah. you paid a hundred thousand, you get 30,000 back as a credit, $34,000 back through deductions. So you're only paying roughly a third of the cost of that solar energy. And if you're in a place like Arizona, Texas, California, to not put solar is just I, I'm, it's just silly to, to not put it on your building because there's so uh, the government's paying for it. it I, I've got a buddy in Texas, um, Kim, who put one hundred eighty five thousand uh, dollar is putting one hundred eighty five thousand dollars solar panels on his business. And he's taking out a loan of one hundred twenty thousand. And and because of that, he actually ends up net ahead. So he ends up with more money than he started with. Yeah. By putting solar on his house and then the solar will and then the solar will pay for the loan, so he just gets the money right away. It's immediate. It's like an, it's like immediately putting cash in your pocket. So uh, I read the other day that very few cars next year, EV uh, electric cars will actually qualify for the credit under the rules that are in this bill um, next year. On top of that, 
you um, you have to make less than one hundred fifty thousand dollars if you're an individual, or less than three hundred thousand dollars if you're married. And uh, if you make more than that, it's it's a drop off. You just don't get it at all. Okay, it's just gone. Um, and only a car that costs less than fifty five thousand dollars, or a truck that costs less than eighty thousand, qualify for the credit. Now, interestingly enough, uh, Ford, I believe it was, when this when they announced this law, they pushed their price up to, I think, $78,000 on their trucks. They go, oh, well, we just have to be under $80,000. We can <laughs> as much as we want as long as it's under $80,000. And uh, that's what they did. So uh, that means that your, you know, your, your Tesla Model S isn't going to qualify. Your Porsche isn't going to qualify for sure. Well, there's uh, huge tax benefits in business. Of course, the government wants technology produced, so there are huge technology tax benefits. Um, The government wants uh, housing, so there's big benefits, as you know, for you do a lot of housing investing and for investing in housing or other uh, investment real estate property. So huge investment, huge tax benefits there, mostly. And and for housing could be anything from a single family house to multi-family building. Exactly, exactly. As long as you're renting it out, it could even be a VRBO or an Airbnb. So it it doesn't have to be long-term rental. It could be, you know, it could be a a, a short-term business rental. And then on top of that, then you add, of course, the government wants to produce food. So agriculture has always had, They've always been really the number one preferred uh, taxpayer. Uh, very few farmers, ranchers pay tax. They just don't. You can, I mean, you can absolutely invest in agriculture. It's, you know, it's a little harder. You have to do a little more research for it and it's a little riskier. So you have to you pay attention to that. But then of course, energy. Energy is the big one right now. Um, <laughs> curiously enough, they didn't do anything uh, to dampen the incentives for oil and gas in this bill. The oil and gas incentives are just the same as they've been for many, many years where you get to deduct basically 100% of the money that you put into the oil and gas uh, drilling um, program. And, uh, and and, And on top of that, it doesn't matter if you're a passive investor, unlike real estate, where you, if you're a passive investor, you're limited on how, how you can write off your deductions. In oil and gas, you're not limited. It's an unlimited amount. Even if you're an employee, that's the one place. Now you're still limited on 500,000, but it is the one place where you don't have to be actively involved to get full tax benefits is oil and gas and solar tax credits. Those also, you don't have to be um, involved at all. 